Microphone well, microphone. Trump, uh, as he, uh, uh, as very much everyone was expected, as he uh, announced that he was declaring a national emergency in the United States. He, he, he got to it eventually. He talked about uh, China trade relations, uh, uh, the UK and the US uh, uh, trade, and he also talked about uh, success in eradicating the IS caliphate um, uh, in Syria. But he, he also uh, mentioned the uh, forthcoming uh, summit in Hanoi between himself and uh, Chairman Kim of North Korea. Then he got to the, the, the business of the day, as it were, where, and he talked about uh, confronting a national security crisis on our southern border. Uh, not just, he said, because it was a campaign uh, promise. And he went on to say that everybody knows that walls work. So. As advertised, he has declared a national emergency. Let's get analysis of, of this uh, here in the studio uh, from uh, Boris uh, Foreman, who is a political uh, scientist uh, from uh, Bard College, and also from uh, Helena Humphrey, who is in Washington. Let's start with the, you in Washington, uh, Helena. Uh, main points for you. Well, what was interesting is that, of course, we were waiting for him to declare this national emergency, Phil. As you say, he eventually um, got to it and did just that. But uh, we also heard from the White House already that he was meant to be doing this at the same time as saying that he would sign off on that spending bill. I just want to highlight that that hasn't been done. He says that he's going to go back to the Oval Office and sign that national emergency. We are still waiting to find out about uh, the signing of that spending bill, which would avert a government shutdown um, here, which needed to be signed off on him. But in terms of the main points regarding the national emergency, as you mentioned, he said that uh, he was not doing this because it was a campaign pledge, but rather because this is a legitimate crisis. I mean, in fact, he actually characterised this as an invasion, an invasion on American soil coming in from the southern border, from criminal gangs, from drug traffickers. Um, he painted a picture of uh, women coming in, being gagged in, um, you know, quite some descriptive language there, um, saying that this was a national emergency, saying that we fight, he said, that the United States fights wars that are 6,000 miles away from home, but we do not confront them on our own soil. And in the same time, and, you know, one of these key takeaways, I would say, for me, is that he spoke about all the people who are trying to enter the United States, including people who perhaps are trying to enter um, in this caravan from Central America. Um, he put them all in the same boat, saying that this was monstrous, despite the fact that many people are coming in through points of entries, despite the fact that many people coming into the United States in this way are, are coming in with um, asylum claims. Um, so heightened, very alarming rhetoric there from the president um, to justify his calling of a national emergency. Uh, Boris Foreman, uh, what main takeaways for you? No, I think Helen uh, pointed out the mo most important aspects. But w what I think uh, he used his time for was if you want to legitimize such a huge spending bill, uh, well, you have to paint some kind of a picture of a threat scenario. Otherwise, it's very... Um, it's, it's hard to understand how you would pay $8 billion or $6 billion, depending on, on, on what it ends up being. What I found interesting is that uh, there was no talk of the smart wall anymore. In many ways, this felt like a, a, an extension of the State of the Union address. But in that, in that particular point, it was different because at the time he said, well, we could also improve and use drones and, and barbed wire, etc. And he, he didn't talk about that. He also didn't talk about how Mexico would, would finance this, uh, this wall that had been the, the campaign uh, promise at the time. It's not surprising that he didn't, but um, it's certainly a point that Democrats will, will, will uh, underline. Uh, and uh, Helena, um, it was interesting towards the, the, the end of uh, Mr Trump's uh, speech that he went into some detail about the fact that, OK, I have now signed this, uh, this, this bill, but it, this is not the end of it. There, there is going to be a long series of challenges, but, but I will win. He, sort of, he, he made a point of laying out that there's going to be a fight now. Yeah, that was interesting, actually, the fact that he just did acknowledge the fact that I'm going to go back to the Oval Office, I'm going to sign it, essentially, no sooner have I signed off on it, then there will be legal challenges to it, and it will go all the way up to the, to the Supreme Court, he said. But then he said it's going to pass because this essentially is an invasion and things have passed which were um, of less 
drama, I suppose. And you also mentioned, of course, that a travel ban from a Muslim majority um, countries, which um, is still in place, which ultimately um, passed at the Supreme Court, uh, evoking that as one victory. So he's laid the groundwork already for a long battle. Um, as I mentioned previously, this may essentially um, be what he was looking for, the only route he could take to make sure that he can build this wall as he would like whilst getting him past 2020 and into potentially um, another presidential term. Uh, Boris Foreman, talk us through the likely battle ahead. So the, the, the president has, has now uh, made the announcement. Um, what happens now? Who does what? Well, now there's go going to be attempts to... First of all, there needs to be a, uh, an understanding of what kinds of lands need to be appropriated or bought from, from private owners. Uh, there has to be, uh, well, there have to be contracts that are made with the, with the, uh, the firms that will actually build the wall. There will be court battles, uh, especially on the ground, on the local scale and on the state level. And this will uh, take a while. But I think what we'll also see is that there will be some kind of a backlash that could emphasize uh, that, yes, of course, Trump is right. He didn't just have the com campaign promise of the wall. He was also talking about infrastructure finance, a huge bill that he promised. He was talking about educational improvements and uh, lowering drug prices. So I think the money that's being spent on the wall is also money that will be lacking elsewhere. And I think that, uh, yeah, this will be pointed out in public discussions and might harm in the long term. Right, so this is going to, clearly going to be a, a big topic uh, in the, the coming uh, weeks and months. For now, though, uh, we thank you, uh, uh, Professor Boris Foreman from the Bard College here in uh, Berlin, and uh, Helena Humphrey in our Washington studio. Uh, thank you.